Hi, and welcome to the TeamSpeak 3 client installation tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn how to download, install, and get started with using TeamSpeak 3 for Windows. We also recommend that you download the TeamSpeak 3 Quick Start Manual from the TeamSpeak website for more details on getting up and running with TeamSpeak 3. Remember that you can use pause and rewind on this video player to keep pace with the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So the first step in getting TeamSpeak 3 installed on my Windows computer is to visit the website and download the free 32-bit or 64-bit client. So I'm going to open up my browser, and as you can see here, the website teamspeak.com is already loaded up, and there's a big green button here that allows me to quickly download a 32-bit version of the client. Now, this button will change if I'm browsing from a Mac, as it will offer to download the Mac client, uh, but what it doesn't change for is whether or not you have a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. So in order to get a complete list of the clients and download a 64-bit version, I simply visit the Downloads menu and click on the TeamSpeak 3 option, and that will bring up a list of all the clients uh, through which I can download my 64-bit version. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, we're not going to go through the download process as it's very similar to other software you've probably downloaded from websites. So I'm going to close the browser. And as you can see here on my desktop, we've actually got an icon for the 64-bit version. Normally, I would double-click on that icon, and that would kick off the installation process. Uh, but again, for the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to walk through the installation process as it's very similar to other software you have probably installed on your computer. What we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the TeamSpeak 3 setup wizard, which allows you to configure the software quickly for chatting. As you can see here, there's a TeamSpeak 3 client icon on my desktop, which was created on successful installation. So I'm going to double click on that, which is going to bring up the TeamSpeak 3 interface. Now, if this was the first time we had installed this software on this computer, the setup wizard would launch automatically. And unfortunately, it's not. So when the interface opens, I need to go up to the settings menu and I need to click on the setup wizard option. Of course, this is also the way to quickly rerun the setup wizard if you need to do so in the future. As you can see here, there are six steps in the setup wizard. Uh, they're all very straightforward, as you'll see. Uh, to kick off the process, we simply click the Next button. So the first step in the setup wizard is to choose our nickname. The nickname is kind of your display name. Uh, it has no impact on security or authentication. It really just represents you in channels uh, in TeamSpeak servers to which you're logged into. So as you can see here, we have selected the name Alpha for this tutorial. I'm going to click the Next button to continue. So the second step in the setup wizard is perhaps the most important step, and it is configuring how TeamSpeak will interact with your microphone. There are two options, as you can see here. One is voice activation detection. Now, this method is very transparent. It simply allows TeamSpeak to engage the microphone when you're speaking and turn it off when you're not. So again, you don't have to really do anything. The second method, which is push to talk, is more like a two-way radio. So the only way that TeamSpeak engages with the microphone is if you're pressing the assigned hotkey. Um, for the sake of the tutorial, though, we're going to use voice activation. So let's click the next button to continue. Now, this step involves setting the microphone sensitivity so that TeamSpeak knows when to turn on the microphone and when to turn it off. Uh, we begin this process by clicking the Begin Test button. Now, you'll see a few things here. Uh, the first is the bar, right? There's a colored bar moving from left to right that grows and shrinks based on the loudness of my voice. Uh, right below it, as you can see here, and they kind of move around, are a couple of arrows. Uh, the arrow on the left represents the low-end sensitivity of your microphone, so uh, when there would be no sound, then it would shut off. And the top arrow, uh, the far right arrow, represents the top level of sensitivity. Now, this center bar here represents um, 
kind of where TeamSpeak is going to engage and disengage the microphone. So what we recommend is that you place that slider about five decibels to the left of the right arrow. So what you want this basically is TeamSpeak will turn on the microphone when you're speaking, not when you're breathing, and not when there's ambient noise. So what you do is simply grab the slider and you move it, um, and it's best to do this when you're saying a test phrase, for example, like testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Now when you're done, you simply release the slider and click the stop test button. So now our microphone has been configured and we're going to click next to continue. The next step in the setup wizard is to assign hotkeys for two primary activities. One is muting the microphone and the other is muting the speakers. So obviously muting the microphone can be really important. Uh, you could be playing a game and somebody could walk into the room or there could be a loud noise uh, when you're in the middle of a, a critical part and you need to mute the microphone. So to assign a hotkey, we simply click the button, which brings up a gray box. And for the tutorial, I think we'll use Alt-M. So that's the key combination that we would need to control uh, in order to mute our microphone. And obviously pressing it again would unmute the microphone. Uh, the same thing goes for speaker mute. Now obviously this is useful as well. You could be playing or the phone could be ringing and you would need to take a phone call. Uh, you could mute the speaker without, you know, without stopping the conversation or without turning off TeamSpeak simply by pressing your speaker mute hotkey. So this time we're going to press this button and we're going to press the right control key. So as you can see, each of these has been mapped to a keystroke now. Uh, if we need to remap them, we would simply click them again and change the key mapping. We click next to continue. The next step in the setup wizard is to choose the sound pack. So there are a number of events within TeamSpeak that will trigger a voice or a sound, uh, such as uh, switching a channel or somebody entering the channel that you're in or somebody leaving the channel. And by default, TeamSpeak 3 comes with two sound packs. One's a female voice and one's a male voice. So you can test any of these by simply clicking the play button next to the event. Uh, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll just leave it at the default, which is the female voice pack. And we'll click the next button to continue. Now, this step in the setup wizard allows us to enable a couple of plugins that come built in with TeamSpeak 3. So TeamSpeak 3 is a very powerful plugin framework that allows it to extend the functionality into other applications and software on your computer. Uh, the first one, which is an overlay, uh, will display a TeamSpeak 3 overlay in the game that you're playing. So it supports a lot of popular games like World of Warcraft and Call of Duty, but this allows you to see the TeamSpeak channels uh, and interface right on the game so that you can maximize the real estate that your monitor has for the game itself and not have to switch back and forth between the game and TeamSpeak's interface uh, or have some sort of split window. So we're going to enable that by checking the box. And the second plugin, which um, really enables TeamSpeak to control the volume of other applications that are running on your computer while you're running TeamSpeak. So what it does is it really just reduces the volume of other applications so that the TeamSpeak volume and the chat volume is always the highest. So we're going to check that one as well. We'll click the next button to continue. So that's the completion of the setup wizard. Now. On this last screen, there are a few important checkboxes that we're going to run through really quickly called our post setup wizard options. Uh, the first option, if we check, is to open the bookmarks window upon completion of the setup wizard. Now, TeamSpeak has a great way for you to easily connect to frequent servers. Uh, we call these bookmarks. So doing this would allow you to immediately create some bookmarks. Uh, now, in order to set these recurring bookmarks, you'll probably need a username and password to some of the servers. So it would be a good idea if you want to open the bookmark window upon completion that you have those handy. The next checkbox uh, is to open a public server list. So there are lots of public TeamSpeak servers out there that require no authentication, no username, no password. 
And uh, they are a great place to really sort of get familiar with the TeamSpeak interface and, uh, you know, and chat with some people and kind of get used to how the software works. The last one is uh, allowing you to rent your own TeamSpeak server. So there are a number of authorized TeamSpeak providers out there who will, uh, for a fee, allow you to host your own TeamSpeak server. Uh, this is great if you want to provide a server for your guild or for your organization. Uh, whatever your needs, if you click this box, a web page will open that will display a list of the available operators from which you can rent your TeamSpeak server. And then, of course, you could come back to TeamSpeak after doing so and connect to it using the username and password provided to you by the operator. So we're going to click Finish here. Now, the last step in really sort of getting you up and running quickly is understanding how to connect to a TeamSpeak server. Uh, that's accomplished very easily through the Connections menu. So we go to Connections and we select Connect. And as you can see, it has a hotkey of Control-S as well. And that's going to open up the Connect window. Now, there's a lot of information in here that you can specify for a server, but really the only two pieces that you need are the server address and the server password. For the sake of this tutorial, we have hidden the server IP address we are using to connect. But as you can see by the tooltip, it is in the format of an IP address or a fully qualified domain name, followed by a colon and then a port number. Now, our nickname is also carried over from the setup wizard. So again, very, very simple to simply enter the server IP address and port number or a host name like, you know, myteamspeak.myserver.com and a password. And all we need to do is click the connect button to be connected to the server. So upon successful authentication, you will see uh, the list of channels. Uh, you will immediately be placed into uh, the channel to which you are assigned or into a lobby or a general channel. Um, and you're actually ready to start chatting. So thank you for watching this tutorial on how to install the TeamSpeak 3 client on Windows. Uh, we hope it was helpful and happy chatting.